Hello, my friend. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jorg Sikkes, and in this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about a feeling that I had today. Because this week, week 51 for me, for the bubble company that I have, was the week of creating the webinar funnel. Um, and I'm nearly finished with that now, and I'm really happy about it. But now I, um, while almost finalizing, I logged into the funnel builder course that made me learn how to make this webinar funnel. I saw that there's so much more material and I learned something that's called a linchpin tactic where you can stack six different funnels. And I also saw that there are a lot of funnel foundations that I haven't watched yet. And I had this urge to like, I need to watch that. But, um, I had this feeling like, ah, oh, maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe it's something I'm missing out. But when I think about it, and when I got myself out of that emotional state of haste, you know, that needing, that need for more information. I don't know if you've ever had this, but don't you just, I, I don't know, I don't really like that feeling. How about you? And um, yeah, I think there's an important lesson to be drawn from it, but I think even more so, the reason why it's important for me to share this is because um, analysis paralysis can be uh, a bitch, you know? It's um, action, it's just actually doing stuff that will move you forward. This is just uh, reading and uh, there's this distinction. Tony Robbins talks about this, Russell Brunson talks about this. There's this distinction between dabbler and a master. So a dabbler is someone who takes in a lot of information, tries a, a bunch of things and then gets bored with it and moves on to the next shiny thing. And information itself can be a shiny thing. Learning about uh, AI uh, for in my life, for instance, learning about <clears throat> all these different funnels for me. I mean, they're all shiny objects and I want to try them all, but then I recapture myself now. And at first, when I started out in my entrepreneurial journey, I did not do that. I just went with the flow, so to speak. So. No, it's a new object. I gotta go there. Oh, another one. There's, there's. A, I gotta go. And <clears throat> I never really mastered anything. I dabbled. And um, for next year, because this video was recorded in twenty five December on twenty five of December of two thousand twenty two. Next year, my greatest, my greatest um, goal is to be consistent because I know that I, <laughs> I'm smart enough and I can do all the things, but consistency for me is key. And pick something, do it for a year, see what happens and reflect on it and then do something else if it doesn't work. But if it does work, do more of that. <laughs> it's that simple, you know, because if you don't do it for like six months or 12 months, at least, if you have a new strategy, then odds might be that you don't have have given the plant enough water to uh, show that it is a good strategy. So this can get to a lot of confusion because you might think like, I've tried everything. No, you dabbled in everything. There's a difference. And that's a lesson that I would have told I needed to tell my 10 year old younger self. Because if I did, that 10 year old, the, the, the me that you would see today would be a multi-millionaire. I am convinced of that. That if I just pick something, because I had the idea to do like SEO um, when I was really young, to make a blog and make it big. But I didn't stick to it. Mm -mm. Or I had the idea to start a YouTube channel. What if I did that six years ago? I might be not as great as PewDiePie, but I would already have millions of subscribers. Now, 
shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? And uh, it brought me a lot of good stuff as well because because I didn't, uh, because I looked at different kinds of opportunity. I have now a bigger lay of the land. I know uh, a lot of stuff. I know a lot about a lot. And that makes me a good advisor, a great advisor, actually. An outstanding advisor. <laughs> Sorry. And, but yeah, uh, so it brought me good stuff as well. And the, f the downside to focus, for example, is that you don't see the real opportunity. And if you're focused on the wrong thing, then it might cost you, if you're focused on the wrong strategy, it will cost you years and years and decades. So that's kind of the balance between focus and creativity and between focus and unfocusedness, actually. They both have to play a part, but um, they have to be in a good balance. And you have to try something for long enough to make sure that you know it works because otherwise you just get confused and you think nothing works. But that's just because you have not mastered anything. You've dabbled in stuff. And I'm telling that mostly to, to remind myself as well. And I think this is where the successful people of our generation, but of past generations, it is one of the key factors that differentiates them from us. They master stuff while people who are not successful in um, society's terms dabble. And well, I can also get from a feeling or need standpoint that dabbling is a lot safer because if you actually start to succeed and master, you get a lot of responsibility. And not everybody wants that. So they just dabble and think, oh, it doesn't work, you know, try something else. And there's also some, there's also a fun aspect to that. So you know, the variety is the spice of life and all. <clears throat> all right, but I started on a rant. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, I think the most important lesson to draw from this is to say to yourself like, oh, good idea when something pops up or oh, more information. Nice. For later. <laughs> and pick like an actual date like, okay, uh, for example, today I had like these the, the funnel foundations and everything that I saw. I saw this thing about... Uh, linchpin six funnel stacks i don't know i don't know about it but i can imagine something but i just say okay i have the coming 10 years to master this i don't need to do it tomorrow because that's another really big pitfall that i have and probably a lot of leaders and entrepreneurs have as well it's like our curse <laughs> But also the reason why we became entrepreneur, because we're optimistic. I heard a really cool quote from Keith Cunningham. He said, like, all my good ideas, of all my problems started as good ideas. Remember that one, because it's a really powerful one. All my problems that I have right now started as good ideas. I have a lot of problems in business. And they started out as good ideas. <laughs> I have a, problem, a lot of problems in life. And they started out as good ideas. For example, I had the idea to get a girlfriend. <laughs> I did it. And now there's a lot of problems attached to it. There is a lot of good stuff attached to it. But all your problems come from good ideas. <laughs> Remember that one. Thank you for watching this video. If you're an entrepreneur who's fighting for sustainability, uh, contact me on LinkedIn or YouTube or whatever you see me. I'm on most of the popular channels, uh, social channels. Because I would love to get to know you and help you break through whatever it is you're going through and grow like bamboo towards the your destiny, towards the life that you want, but to also, more, even more importantly, towards obtaining the sustainable development goals together as a species, as a human species. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.